UFOs are real, burgeoning, not going away. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the heart of the Santa Monica Mountains from Studio One. Studio Two is no longer with us. We've sort of closed that down in Oklahoma. So this is it. Everything is piled into this little 500 square foot area, and it's it's absolutely packed full. And once we get number nine done, um, I gotta I gotta do a cleanup here. So we're looking for volunteers. Just joking. Anyway, folks, we'll get into today's report uh, very quickly. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Excess belly fat has been deemed the most dangerous fat of them all, as it's linked to so many health issues. The reason being, excess belly fat grows deep in the abdominal cavity and puts pressure on some of the body's most vital organs. That's one of the reasons why myself, along with so many people, are beginning to turn to this amazing new substance, which is thoughtfully formulated with science-backed ingredients that promote reduced fat storage. Help to speed up the breakdown of fat, support weight management, reduce cravings, and boost metabolism. Folks, the best part I love is that you can get 51% off for the rest of the month or until they sell out, whichever comes first. Get yours now by going to trimwithla.com. Once again, that's trimwithla.com. Trimwithla.com. I'm going to give this 30 days. I'll report back to you and we'll see what it does. Before I, I've, I've covered this, this is on our Roswell film. We have two films there. Uh, Roswell Revisited Exoneration. We believe that this film will exonerate the Marcel name. It was not a weather balloon or some secret Nazi craft, um, experimental craft that crashed uh, in, in the desert of uh, outside Roswell. And by the way, the debris site is in a very, very extremely remote area. What's interesting is in number two, we were actually called Roswell Revisited in the debris field. Uh, Chuck Zukowski and Frank Kimbler are there with the metal detectors, and we're talking about other eyewitnesses that saw what happened. And we've got we've got too many eyewitnesses, okay, talking about something very cataclysmic that happened in the debris field, in and around Roswell. And this one woman uh, was a young girl at the time. She was camping with her family uh, miles away up in the pines. And this thing, the craft was 100 feet wide, and it came down and clipped the top off the, off the pine trees. You can go there today, and you can see the pine trees go like this, dip down and come back up. And it's not the ground that's doing it. All this is in the film. But let, let's get into it. So this is Jesse Marcel Sr., uh, circa 1947. We went to Roswell. We went to the what was left of the old 509th bombing group in, in, in number two. Uh, you'll see that I'm in uh, Hangar 84. More about that. You, you, you got to check the film out, folks. Two films, and they're just packed full of all sorts of incredible information. So this is Jesse Marcel Jr., and that's Denise, uh, his daughter. And we interviewed Denise uh, in our film. She came in studio here, and we talked. Jesse Marcel Jr. is getting a little up in years there, and I actually interviewed him uh, and we did a, a, a written interview. In other words, I sent him the questions, and then he sent me back the answers. And we did a reenactment of that interview, and it's in the very first film, Exoneration. So Roswell Report, um, as I sat down with Francisco Carrera, and, and Francisco appears in the film, because we're talking about this. Why does the Air Force or the Army or, or the official U.S. government report, why every 10 or 15 years do they have to redo this? Roswell Report, case closed. And of course, they're trying to tell us it's a weather balloon and Project Mogul and the, the, the bodies that were recovered were crash test dummies. Well, Stanton Friedman poked a hole in that immediately. He, he was an incredible researcher. And uh, uh, Stanton Friedman basically said, well, gee, that, isn't that interesting? The crash test dummies weren't created or used until 1952 or 1953. So unless someone has a time machine, uh, the people in 1947 actually saw what they said they saw. And we've got too many witnesses that, that come on the record in the film. And you'll see that in Roswell 1 and Roswell 2. Um, then we've got this, The Day After Roswell. This is by uh, Colonel Philip J. Corso. And I believe that this was a deathbed confession. Uh, this might have been sort of a tip of the iceberg for disclosure because not too long after um, Corso's death, um, things began to manifest. And of course, I'm talking about 2017 in December with Commander David Fravor on the Tucker Carlson show, who engaged a tic-tac-shaped object. In fact, there's a clip in the film 
in in both in both films, both of the Roswell films. It's from um, White Sands. We don't know who took this or who leaked it out. In my opinion, it's the real deal. You see a UFO come down like this. It's all glowing. It hits the ground and skips up. Then it goes arcs like this and comes down again. When it hits the ground a second time, it explodes violently. And this is what we drill into in the film. When this, when, when this thing exploded in Roswell in 1947, we believe that metal shards basically were like a 22 bullet into the ground. And this is why when we're in the debris field, we find two pieces of the wreckage. How do we know? Well, it's from an aluminum series, number 6,000. And it's not a direct match. It's an aluminum alloy, 6,000 alloy, okay? There, there's like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. So number 6,000 is getting up there. And uh, I think 4,000 is like the, the, the top of a, of a Coke can type of deal. So this is really interesting. But the bottom line was... The 6000 series wasn't invented until 1953. So what are these little pieces of metal which under a scanning electron microscope show high heat and some sort of a, um, a very cataclysmic, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, very intense conflict that happened to this metal because it's burnt and it shows signs of trauma um, and also something penetrating it pretty amazing stuff. But here's the deal. It's not a full, it's not a match. That's an aluminum alloy that wasn't invented until 53. What's it doing in the debris field buried six to eight inches in the soil? You tell me. That's why the Holloman Air Force, Air Force uh, UFO, Holloman Base UFO crash is so compelling because these things are shooting out like bullets out of a gun. They didn't get it all, in our opinion. It was not a weather balloon, in our opinion. It was not some top secret Nazi, um, you know, collaboration from Operation Paperclip. I don't believe that for a second. I don't. We have testimony that the metal was passed around in a conference room. Jim Ramey was there. Um, Hout was there. And this is all in the film. And no one had ever seen anything like this before. It's not the Russians. It's not the Chicoms. And... The intelligence officer, Jesse Marcel Jr., would have known something. Gemma Ramey is the guy that put the kibosh on this because the Roswell Daily Paper came out with a story that says um, Army, Army Air Force recovers crashed saucer. 24 hours later, they redacted the statement. Gemma Ramey says excitement not justified. It's a weather balloon, but we know it's not a weather balloon. This is Jesse Marcel Sr. holding pieces of a weather balloon. We have a clip of him in the film where he states, well, it wasn't a weather balloon. And uh, even though Gemma Ramey was talking about that it was a weather balloon, we both knew differently. Why? Because Marcel was a patsy. They substituted the real material for the weather balloon material. His face says it all. And we have Linda Marcel that comes on record for the first time. Linda Marcel is Jesse Marcel Jr.'s wife, widow. And she comes on the record and tells us point blank that it was not a weather balloon. The events at Roswell set the precedent for what we see until 2017 with Commander David Fravor. Um, there's Gemma Ramey holding, holding the telegram. What Ramey did not know was that decades later, a, a researcher, investigator, scientist, David Rudiak, would use computer enhancement uh, ability with his computer to enhance the telegram that Ramey is holding. Here's what it says. Acknowledges that a disk, right? The word disk is used, and if you go down a little further, the disk they will ship to Wright Pat. Then they say, uh, when you go down even further than that, you'll see this, the victims of the wreck. So crash test dummies are not exactly the victims of the wreck. And then we see the word disk and disk, even though it's spelled differently, there it is. So, you know, and you can see it will ship to where? Go down to the next line, Wright Air Force Base, because it wasn't called Wright Pat. It was just called the Wright, Wright Brothers Air Force Base in Ohio. We have an interview with Jim and Carolyn Rankin, who at the end of life, Colonel Hill, at the end of his life, he was 90 before he passed away. So Jim and Carolyn are with him almost on a daily basis, and they're helping him make that transition. 
liquidate his assets, give them to, you know, give the assets to family members, whatever. And one day, Carol, and this is all on film, by the way, uh, Carol says, well, what about Roswell? And Colonel, uh, Carolyn Rankin says to Colonel Hill, what about Roswell? And Colonel Hill says, what about it? And Carolyn says, was it a weather balloon? And Hill drops his head like this and lets out a big sigh and says it wasn't a weather balloon. Colonel Hill was OSS, the forerunner of the CIA. He was an interrogator. He was flown from Dallas-Fort Worth to Roswell, New Mexico. There were two bodies that were retrieved. One was dead, the other one was alive. Hill, Colonel Hill, tried to make contact with the other one. It's all in the film, folks. It's groundbreaking stuff. In our opinion, what crashed in Roswell was not a weather balloon or some top secret, you know, experimental craft that we got from the Nazis. Here's a clip. I think you'll find this interesting. I've been reading about Roswell and the Roswell crash and the mystery metal and all this stuff literally for decades, folks. And Frank is out here with his metal detector and he gets a hit. And we have this all on film and he's digging it out and digging it out. And he finally finds, you know, he's down to the last little bit of a handful. And sure enough, there's the piece that comes out. And that's it, folks. It's, <laughs> that's in number two, and you got to check it out. Uh, these will be available after, probably around the first of the year or right around there. We will be shipping it. If you do a pre-order now by going to lamarzilli.net, you can save some money. We will have both of the films up on our streaming site with a very special code. So if you buy them now, you'll be able to stream them and watch them over the holiday season. Merry Christmas, one and all. Roswell 1 and Roswell 2. Um, Exoneration is what the first film is called. And of course, The Debris Field is what the second film. This is what some of the folks were saying that have uh, screened the film, Roswell 1. L.A., this is the best I have seen. I love the testimonies. That's from Everett. Matt Brunet, it's the best overall picture that tells the story about Roswell. Tony M., finish up the movie last night. It's quite compelling for sure, and hopefully will nudge the government to accelerate disclosure. The film itself is beautifully woven together. Great editing and pristine quality. Should certainly be on Netflix. Why not? Can't wait for part two. This is from Vicki Joy. Great film, L.A. and Gil. Talk about credible eyewitness testimony. From Mike H., just watched the video. In my opinion, one of the best yet. Congrats to you and Gil. This is from Doris. Wow, just finished Roswell Revisited. Phenomenal investigation. Folks, check it out along with further evidence, along with our cattle mutilation film, along with the five. We are the only... We are the only Christian ministry that will have nine films, nine films on the UFO phenomena. We've done the work. We've done the deep dive. Everything from close encounters of the first, second, third, and fourth kind. It's there. It's all in our film series, as well as a deep dive into the events of 1947, which set the tone 
for ufology, literally for decades. All that's changing and we are in a window that I've never seen before. Representative Tim Burchett said uh, on the record after the congressional hearing that he couldn't even get to the first base. He couldn't even find out who to talk to, what, what contractor, what branch of government, who, where are the saucers being kept? What about David Grush, the whistleblower, who appeared in front of Congress and was also on Tucker Carlson last week, right? Ta it was a very lengthy interview talking about uh, what, he, what he heard. I mean, the guy's a whistleblower. The American people have a right to know what's going on. This is, in my opinion, the coming great deception. This is what we are warned about in the biblical prophetic narrative, that men will faint from fear for coming upon the earth, that even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. Satan comes with all signs and lying wonders. We're here, folks. And with everything happening in the Middle East, days of chaos, that's why I put this up here. This book was, was written in 2015. And some of what I wrote in that book is coming to pass. And it's extremely alarming. Folks, we are living in turbulent, tumultuous times, unlike everything I, anything I've ever seen. Let's pray for peace. Let's hope that this thing doesn't escalate. Let's hope. Let's pray. In the meantime, Merry Christmas one and all. We serve a risen Savior, and that is the basis, the foundation of our faith. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He's wonderful. He's fair. He's just. And I think he's coming soon. Thanks so much for watching. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Late this afternoon, a bulletin from New Mexico suggested that the widely publicized mystery of the flying saucers may soon be solved. Army Air Force officers reported that one of the strange disks had been found and inspected sometime last week. Our correspondents in Los Angeles and Chicago have been in contact with Army officials endeavoring to obtain all possible late information. Joe Wilson reports to us now from Chicago. The Army may be getting to the bottom of all this talk about the so-called flying saucers. As a matter of fact, the 509th Atomic Bomb Group headquarters at Roswell, New Mexico, reports that it has received one of the disks which landed on a ranch outside Roswell. The disc landed at a ranch at Corona, New Mexico, and the rancher turned it over to the Air Force. Rancher W.W. Brizel was the man who discovered the saucer. Colonel William Blanchard of the Roswell Air Base refuses to give details of what the flying disc looks like.